All right, I'd like to thank Kyle for riding that bike for us in that video footage. It was pretty awesome. I think you've got it down, about got your balance and everything. It's pretty good. <laughs> New series we've got coming up uh, starting January 10th called Represent. And um, we've been talking about that a lot here lately, about representing the father and representing the family. It's going to be a pretty awesome series, so I just encourage you to check that out as we, uh, as we dive into that the 10th through, I think it's February 14th, up to Valentine's Day. Well... My first Sunday that I get to preach since I've gone through all this junk in my body. I mean, that's pretty. So if it's bad, it was the brain surgery. (laughs) I think I I did try to get an upgrade, but they wouldn't. (laughs) Wouldn't go for it. Can't mess with perfection, I think, is what they said. I don't know. Mm. (laughs) Man, I, I really am so thankful to see everybody this morning. You had a lot of choices of places to be and other places to celebrate uh, the weekend with some friends, but I sure am glad you're here, and I'm uh, very thankful that God's given us a chance to, uh, to worship together. I got a little video I want to show you that I think would be kind of fun. This week, you can clean all your kitchen linoleum in the time it used to take to clean this small patch of linoleum. Yes, in half the time and with half the work of soap or newest detergent. How? with new Spick and Span. Thanks to Spick and Span's amazing cleaning power, the mop or cloth need only be damp. Then once over, no going back a second time to rinse and a third time to wipe dry. See, dirt, grease, even heel marks vanish. Just once over, and linoleum dries instantly, gleaming clean, ready to walk on or wax. You can replace the furniture the miniature through. Remember, just once over lightly with new Spick and Span. No rinsing, no wiping, once over. It's grand. <laughs> Easy, right? That's what we love to do that. Don't you like to do the floors, Robin? Love it. It's awesome. Once, a, once over. Well, you know, we live in a world that's fascinated, <laughs> fascinated by new things. Anything new, right? We're always looking for something better, always something that's a, a new way to do things. And does anyone remember something? I'm getting ready to show up on the screen here, some old stuff here like vinyl records, eight-track tapes. I know um, Randy Bancroft still uses his eight-track player in his car. <laughs> Cassettes, vinyl, yeah, reel-to-reels. I mean, that was like some cutting-edge technology right there, new stuff, right? And they're all replaced with awesome technology. It just keeps getting better and better. Things like, uh, you remember stuff that we use now called CDs, right? CDs, it's, it's almost an obsolete technology, right? It's crazy because now everything's gone digital. You can put it on your phone, your iPod, iPad, whatever you're using. It's pretty wild how stuff seems to grow. Well, I grew up in an area where there was no, no internet, an era, an era when there was no internet. Uh, we had no, no email, no cell phones. I mean... When I was growing up and wanted to talk to my girlfriend, I had to write a letter, right? You had to write stuff down, and then you had to actually, like, mail it. In the United States, they have a thing called mail. You put it in an envelope, stamp goes on it, mailbox goes to the house. It's awesome how it worked, but um, that kind of stuff, not so much anymore, just bills, right? Um, But old things, they, they do pass away, and things can become new. So today I want to talk to you about the most mind-blowing technical advancement in the history of mankind. That's God's new. Let's pray. God, I, I thank you so much for, uh, for giving us, what a, what a wild year. <laughs> Lord, you have given us so much, and obviously, for those of us in this room, we're here to talk about it. So God, I thank you that you're always a God of new Maybe it's just us coming into a realization of what that really means. God, I pray that in some small way we're able to do that today. I pray you speak life to us. God, help us to be more like you. Experience your plan for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I want to read to you uh, from 2 Corinthians today. We're going to be in chapter 5, verses 16 through 20. If you've got your Bibles, you can check them out there. We'll have it up on the screen. If you're following along with version, I think it's, it should be up and running today. Um, either way, we're going to come out a different, different translation today called, called The Message, starting at verse 16. 
Are y'all ready? Y'all got your Bibles? You ready to read? Y'all like locked and loaded, aren't you? All right, here we go. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people by what they have or how they look. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, and a new life virgins. I know, big fat word, right? It means begin to grow increasingly rapid, virgin. Look at it. All this comes from the God who settled the relationship between us and him. It then called us to settle our relationship with each other. God puts the world square with himself through the Messiah, giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God's given us the task of telling everyone what he's doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to persuade men and women to drop their differences and enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Become friends with God. He's already a friend with you. Well, on the surface, it seems real easy to read that, and we can kind of go past what God is trying to show us, I think, in this passage. Let's kind of think back a little bit further to Genesis, and, and um, when God created something out of nothing, there was, there was nothing. The Bible says there wasn't anything out there. It was just this dark, vast space, right? And God spoke it into existence. He spoke the world, and then, bam, there it was, the universe, earth, everything new, something that had never been done before, not just a new kind of cleaning solution that makes things better for us, that kind of new, but a new, like, never been done before kind of new. Never happened, spoken into being. God's new. You see, we, we all have a lot of old in us, old thoughts, right, old ways, old experiences, but God, he can make all things new. So, so that new is a little different than maybe some of the new we would think of when we, when we just skip past those words, right? New, like never been done before kind of new. Like new creation kind of a new. Not like you have, everybody's cleaned floors before and had some kind of solution, right? And now they got this new spick and span. Well, we already had something to clean floors with, but it's just something new. Not this kind of new. This is a God kind of new. Like something out of nothing kind of new is what he wants to do with you. We just read in those verses, now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. When's the last time you took a good look on the inside? Could you use one of those fresh starts, one of those news right now in your life? And we just came off of a high time, obviously. Sometimes they're great for folks during Christmas, sometimes not so much, can be a little upsetting, a little depressing, sad. Old things. Could you use a fresh start, a new start from the Lord today in your life? We're talking something that's never been done before. In our next series, we're going to be learning about representing, and one of the key verses we just read is like that. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he's doing. We're Christ's representatives. Do you know what he's doing? Has he spoken a word to you? And are you representing him well? It's a little deeper now, doesn't it, right? It's like, okay. So here's a little personal application for you. Obviously, it's the first time I've been able to stand up here and, and communicate since everything that I've gone through. And uh, it's been a whirlwind the past year for us and for me and my family, it's been quite dramatic. Uh, this time last year, we were faced with losing Robin's mother. It was a horrible time and an awesome time. We got to be with her. And um, 
and spent time with her, but we had to say goodbye. That was tough. A little bit after that, I was wrestling with, with my business. Some of you know that I used to have a music store here in town, and it even sucks just to say that, but I used to have a music store in town, and it was a big part of our lives, a big part of my life, and we had a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of friends. Um, there's, there's a lot of you in here today that I met through the store. Um, we had some great relationships, opportunities to see things built in our community. I'm passionate about music. I think you guys know that. So I just loved like being a music dealer, like a drug dealer, but a music dealer and dealing the drug of music to my community, man. I like people to get hooked on it. It was, it was awesome to see like a three-year-old kid come in and, and get his first guitar or get their first set of drumsticks and start a, a new life with something that they would share for the rest of their lives with friends and family. It was powerful to have moments like that. And they're, they're gone for me in that aspect now. I had to say goodbye to that chapter in our lives with the store, our economy, everything's going on. Obviously, the Lord has a plan for us, and, and his plan was for us to stop that. We had to stop it. It wasn't easy. It was horrible. Then, uh, before all that stuff started happening, then this ugly cancer comes back into my life. And I had been through it once before, and God healed me. It was awesome. And then they come back and they say, uh, you know, this time you've got it in a couple places. It's in your lung. It's in your adrenal gland right there at your kidneys. And, and uh, you've got stage four cancer. What the heck are you talking about, stage four cancer? You know, I'm, I'm done with cancer. It wasn't done with me yet, evidently. So we started a new battle with fighting this thing with this stupid cancer that was inside of my body. Quite a crazy moment, right? And then during the midst of all this time fighting the cancer and going through everything we went through, I came on the stage here one day and was leading worship, and I started seeing black lights, and my head was killing me. I didn't let you all know, but I was stupid, and I should have probably got off the stage, but I didn't. But I was having seizures on the stage, had no idea what was going on. I never had that before, you know what I'm saying? So it was something totally different, and I uh, was Mr. Macho Man and went a couple more days without going to the doctor, and finally went to the doctor, and they said, you need to go to the ER now. We get to the ER, and the doctor comes in, Mr. Crump, it's bad news. I thought, I know, it's a sinus infection. <laughs> no, you've got bleeding on your brain, and you've got a tumor, and the cancer is spread to your brain, and we're going to send you to Duke right now. What? I can't tell you what my wife said, but it was quite an oh, impressive moment there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, so um, we've been through a lot of that stuff. I, I say all that to say in my own personal walk, I've, I've been through some crap myself this year, like you have, I'm sure. We all have our experiences, whatever it may be. And um, the one thing that I've found is a, a scripture that was important to me, off notes, is that what, what the devil, what Satan, what evil means for our destruction, God means for our good. And... I have been blown away as a result of what this affliction has been in my life. It's almost been worth it. I hate it. Don't get me wrong. want it gone. It's on its way out. However, what has happened as a result has been amazing. Old things can pass away. All things become new. And we have had some great, great support. It's been amazing how you guys and other people around the, around the stinking world, I'm telling you, have been supporting us and praying for us and, and seeing God do some great things. I mean, Satan picked the wrong guy to give cancer to. I'm just telling you. You know, I mean, stupid. He's a dumb, dumb devil. Um, so now you're all praying, right? And we're all like, God, heal him, heal him. Heal. Get the cancer out of his body. And then cancer starts going away, and I'm healed. And now everybody's like, woo I've got faith because God can heal. He's a dumb devil. He picked the wrong guy, I'm telling you, because God can make all things new, right? So in the midst of this time, some of the new that I've been able to experience in my own life is a couple of things. I'm, I'm a really fast guy. I, I like to move. I, I hate to be still. Hate it. And um, during this time, my, uh, my brain surgeon, neurosurgeon guy, real smart guy, got brains and everything, he, uh, he kept telling me to slow down. I'm like, I'm at home. I mean, I'm sitting in this chair. I've got nothing. I'm just, how much slower can I possibly be? I can't drive, can't do anything on my own. It was, it was crazy, right? And, 
And every time I'd go back, he'd say, you need to slow down. I don't do what you're saying, right? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But what he was saying was the scripture that God was dealing with my heart was to be still and know that I'm the Lord. And um, it's difficult when you're a squirrel like me to be still. And uh, what I wasn't doing, although I was laying down and sitting down and people were serving me and doing all kinds of great things, this stuff up here would not stop. Just kept on going and going and going, and I would get frustrated, and it would cause more problems for me. And in the midst of those problems and struggles, I had to come to this realization of what slow down means. And that's a new for me. That was a new thing that God was speaking into my life. And now as a result of all the stuff that I got to experience and go through, the benefit is I'm experiencing something new from the Lord in my own life. I get to experience knowing that he's God and being still. I'm starting to speed up a little bit. I'm trying to remember how to be still. See, there's, there's always a place in our lives where we can experience something new from the Lord. Now, he's the same. He never changes, right? It's not like God's new, but he makes us new. So sometimes that new could be a realization like I had. Right? Does it make sense what I'm trying to say? So I, I came into this new, and I saw people in a different way. And I, I surely don't mean to say this boastfully at all. Please understand my heart. But I like to do things for a lot of people. I'm a doer. I do stuff all the time. That's the way I'm wired. I love to serve people. I just love it. To be served was new for me, different. To have people serve me and my family was hard for me. It was hard because I want to be the guy doing that, not you. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird. I know it sounds stupid, but that was another new for me that the Lord was trying to teach. I wonder today what that could look like for you. I'm thankful that God's created in me something new out of old. And in that freedom of new, I continue to seek more newness in my life now. It just looks different. It's a different perspective now. Just like there are things explored and discovered every day in our planet. You know, Earth is kind of old, you know? So it's not like we have a new Earth. But we always find new things on planet Earth. They've been there the whole time, right? But we come into this realization of something that we've never seen before. A new plant that creates a cure for cancer or a new animal that we've never experienced before. There's always something there that we can come into and try to find that's a new. I've always felt God was calling me to serve and to serve others. I never realized how difficult, humbling, and rewarding it is to be served, to take time to slow down and enjoy it, to take in the reality of, of being still and knowing that he's God. A result of this, this old disease that affects so many has given me new life. New hope, give me new rest, and I carry this with me now. I'm always pressing into the rest that gives me life. As a result, it gives life to those around me. I read in a book by uh, Josiah Osland something I shared with the team, our, our worship team. I'm going to put the quote up on the screen for you here says, your ministry capacity is directly proportional to your prayer capacity. Spend time knowing the Father. You can't lead someone somewhere that you haven't been or aren't going yourself. I'm going to leave that on the screen for a minute. If you've got you version, it's on there. If you don't, that'd be a great quote to write down this morning. Let's read it slowly again. Your ministry capacity what God's called you to, the thing you're supposed to be doing while you're here, that capacity is directly proportional to your prayer capacity. Little ministry, little prayer, right? Lots of prayer, bigger capacity, bigger ministry. It doesn't just come easy. Spend time knowing the Father. You can't lead someone somewhere that you haven't been or aren't going yourself. Some of us have been in here and 
served overseas or just came home yesterday. You know, a lot of times when we have to go out on patrols, it's not like we've never done patrols before. It might be a new area, but we have to lead. And it's really hard to lead somebody if you've never done it before, right? Or if you're willing to do it. You've got to practice. Old saying in the army, what we do in practice, you'll do in war. It's the same thing. So I challenged our worship team a few weeks ago, and it was really, I'd say it was pretty explosive for us as a team that um, over the period of about a week or two, God began to, to cultivate something in us individually that sparked something new for us as a team as we press into the presence of the Lord. And I challenged them to come up with with something that was their new. I shared my new, like I'm sharing it with you a little bit, and I asked them what their new was. So I'm going to show you that in a second, but I want to ask you a question today. What's your new? Have you experienced it yet? In this year past, or, or maybe looking forward to 2016, has God spoken a word to you specifically about what your new is? I guarantee you that he's saying it. It's just a matter of whether or not you're hearing it. I want to give you a little bit of an example through, uh, through some of the things our worship team said. Let's watch. Listen. Assurance. Boldness. Mission. Patience. Identity. Testimony. Focus. Growth. Filled. Purpose. It doesn't have to be much. It's simple. It's just hard. <laughs> so my, my challenge to you today is as we leave behind some old things of 2015, God can do something extraordinarily new in your life. I will always be a person that had cancer. It's always going to be a part of my story. Always. But I'll always be able to view and live life being healed. I'll always be able to experience something new. Set free. And all the excitements and the lessons get to be learned as well. My question for you today is, what's your new? What word has God spoken to you? Maybe even in the past hour. A couple examples we've given to you. So I want to, um, to give us a moment to think about that. 